Sachs Covered Bridge is one of Adams County's beloved landmarks, but the reason we're here today is to talk about much more, to talk about the natural resources that flow under and are surrounding this historic bridge. Hello, I'm Karen Hendricks with Celebrate Gettysburg Magazine, and joining me today is Drew Ann Neal, president of the Gettysburg Nature Alliance, and they are a nonprofit organization dedicated to the education and preservation of Gettysburg's heritage and habitat. I think I got that you right. You did it perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us today, Drew. You're welcome, I'm happy to be here. Well, this bridge is a beloved icon but there is so much more here to talk about. We're really here to talk about the water that flows under mm -hmm. and is surrounding this area. So tell us, Drew, about the significance of this creek. Okay, sure, absolutely. Well, this is Marsh Creek. A lot of people who either visit Gettysburg frequently or live here familiar with the battle will know about Marsh Creek. Um, and the significance of Marsh Creek you know, back in the Civil War days and things like that, it was used by troops. This bridge, we believe, this access point was used by a, a lot of Civil War troops, um, especially probably on the retreat, um, General Lee's um, Confederate Army retreat um, after the Battle of Gettysburg. But today, and this is where we do the, the habitat and the heritage, because we really feel that they're linked, this creek is a very important part of the Chesapeake Bay watershed. And if anybody's familiar with the Chesapeake Bay um, and their watershed, it, it's really, it's a, and there's a foundation that supports them and things like that. It's a commitment to make sure that the water remains clean, not only for human consumption and drinking water sources, but also for the habitats that live along this creek. And we wanna make sure that for future generations, this creek survives. <laughs> this creek survives to sustain crucial habitats that if they don't survive can cause a breakdown in all kinds of ecosystems. And I think we wanna make sure that we can do what we can for these, these beds of water that are so crucial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, when we talk about heritage and habitat, your organization, the Gettysburg Nature Alliance, operates a highly visible location with heritage directly in its title, the Gettysburg Heritage Center. Some people still refer to it as the Gettysburg Wax Museum. <laughs> we get that a lot. <laughs> um, but that's a highly visible location. But your organization also operates a location that's a little bit lower profile mm -hmm. and that's why we're here today mm -hmm. and we're going to take you our viewers around with us as we spin the camera around to s show you what's on the other side of Sachs Covered Bridge so come along with us here we go 360 degrees well actually probably one, 180 and, and I am going to put my sunglasses on because <laughs> yes let's do that it's July <laughs> we're going to reframe the shot and then just over my shoulder here is a beautiful building kind of looks like a barn mm -hmm. um, so tell us what we're seeing, Drew, but this this is one of the Gettysburg Nature Alliance's properties as well, right? It is. We actually own the property, pretty much all of the grass area that you see there, and then some additional property that surrounds Saks Bridge. And that barn, it, we, it, we affectionately refer to it right now as our learning barn. Mm -hmm. And it, you, a lot of people started asking questions during the pandemic when we were building it. And of course, everything pretty much got put on hold for two to three years, really. I would say 2023 is really the first year we've come back and said, okay, now we can start using things uh, normally. Mm -hmm. So the learning barn, we want it to be an outlet for education and preservation where people can come and learn about the habitat. So school groups can come here and learn about the habitat and do water studies and actually see what's happening in Marsh Creek and test the water. Right now we use it for a lot of leadership groups that are that are really learning about the heritage of the battlefield, but they want this bucolic setting that, that you know, there were soldiers here. Mm -hmm. Just because it's not within Gettysburg National Military Park doesn't mean there weren't soldiers throughout here. So it's still a vital part of Gettysburg. Mm -hmm. So right now the, the barn is used for educational purposes and we're going to expand that because we believe in things like using nature to heal and for your mental health and all of those things, which is why it's so important for, you know, the habitat preservation. So you'll be seeing things in coming months like, you know, yoga at the barn on, on, a, on a Saturday morning in a very relaxing way. You can see this is an absolute perfect setting for such a thing. And then you'll be seeing things like, eventually we sh should be working by next year on a, on a comprehensive walking trail um, that will kind of 
surround the barn and, and things like that. And we're hoping to include things like a monarch way station and um, pollinators for the bees and some benches and some more native plants and trees. And we do have a partnership with the American Chestnut Foundation, which is working really hard to restore the American chestnut tree. Mm. And um, so we're hoping to, to incorporate some of their work into what's out here at Saks Bridge. But number one, if you look at the building, you can see that we didn't want it to be intrusive to this gorgeous, gorgeous viewscape mm -hmm. because that's a part of preserving our habitat as well. If we do stargazing seminars out here, we want it to be a place where you can come and you can have that those, those black out night skies mm -hmm. where you can really, really get an appreciation for what this area offers mm -hmm. and how important it is to, to preserve our habitat and the heritage that goes with it. You're mentioning so many interesting things, stargazing, yoga, mm -hmm. educational, leadership training. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we're gonna take you, our viewers, along with us and come explore the barn. Mm -hmm. You're gonna take us inside and closer to the property. So stay tuned, we'll be right back and bring you right to the barn. Look at where we are now. You can see Saks Covered Bridge in the distance and now we are kind of on the other side of the driveway here uh, <laughs> with the learning barn at Saks Bridge in our background. So Drew, tell us a little bit about the construction of this gorgeous building. And I'm gonna pan around to more fully show it behind us. Okay, sure. And when we decided to do this, this project, you know, we had some elaborate designs that we looked at and we really, as, as a board, as an organization, we said we don't want this to be obtrusive at all to this land. This landscape is absolutely breathtaking mm -hmm. and we didn't want to interfere with that at all. So it's a smaller building and what we did in the construction was we used a lot of reclaimed beams mm -hmm. from some, you know, abandoned farms that have been torn down, things like that. We used those things like that. We have energy efficient appliances. We tried to do everything as sustainable as possible that you can do tiny little things. The footprint of a building using some things that are reclaimed that have already been on the land and are, are maybe just tossed away um, use those when you can and and you can really impact the earth in a positive positive way and our our, our habitat here which is so crucial to what everybody experiences at gettysburg i mean soldiers use the land they use topographical maps they use the stars they used all of these things that we're talking about when they came and fought here and we feel like that's just as important to preserve Speaking of the earth, your landscaper is I am, behind us. He is. <laughs> and, and, uh, so, that's a good thing. But. Yes, but we're going to take it inside, mm -hmm. Drew, and uh, we're going to look to you to give us a, a mini tour and okay. we'll take our, our viewers inside here in just a moment. Let's go. <laughs> We are back inside the Learning Barn at Saks Bridge. And Drew, this is absolutely gorgeous. I wish you, our viewers, could smell. There's just this amazing woodsy, fresh scent in here. Uh, I know it was built a few years ago, mm -hmm. but that woodsy smell still remains. It's just yes. incredible. Mm -hmm. And the light in here is gorgeous. So tell us, Drew, about the uses for this beautiful new facility. Sure, and um, and again, we're very excited. We. We wanted to make sure that everyone around here, especially who lives here, and, and then the community as a whole who cherishes Saks Bridge, and if you visit here, that we weren't going to turn this, and you can see from the from the smaller size of this facility, this is not designed for two to 300 people mm -hmm. for large scale events. Mm -hmm. And we don't, we, we just can't have that because it would do way too much damage to what we're trying to protect, which is the habitat. And right. um, so we didn't want to do that. You can see now there's some tables and chairs mm -hmm. set up because what we do, Right now is we work with a lot of partners who love this space for things like leadership programs, our friends at the Gettysburg Foundation, our friends at the American um, Battlefield Trust. Is that, I always get their name wrong now. Um, the American Battlefield Trust have used this. We have um, leadership groups from uh, Lancaster and York who come in and use this. And um, eventually we'll get back to working with uh, Chesapeake Bay Foundation school groups who come because they like to do scientific exploration with the students in places that have a historic relevance wow. because we're here in Pennsylvania. You have it all. So we said, well, let us show you what we have. And, and they love that. But we're and hoping to use this for partner programs, for some of our author programs. We're going to have some very exciting things coming up next year regarding books and authors on both the habitat and the heritage side. So we'll be using this facility a lot, but its primary purpose is education. That's the number one purpose for this facility in a setting 
where you're kind of immersed in the habitat. So even if you're here to learn about some battlefield action, you're surrounded by what life was pretty much like in 1863 in this amazing habitat. So, and yes, the smell is amazing. That's from our reclaimed beams and things like that. And everyone who has come in here, including our staff, has just taken, uh, everybody loves the barn. And we do get a lot of inquiries. We are very selective about what it's used for because we don't want it to become, you know, it's not ever going to be a huge party place. You know, some smaller gatherings, people can call us, but we, we limit the amount of people. And like I said, it will never be, you can even see from the parking, we don't have a ton of parking. We have room for one or two buses to park. Mm -hmm. um, if 60 students come in and use the place as kind of a, a way station, if they're down at the creek, the floor and everything is designed to be easily cleaned. Um, and we have a restroom and a small kitchen where we, we stock things like water and things like that or students can keep lunches. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, people can get things catered here. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of use the leave no trace mantra at the, at the barn, just like if you were outside on a trail. You're welcome to, you know, we rent the facility, you can use it, we just ask that you leave no trace. So yeah. bundle, up, bundle up your trash, take it with you. And everybody has been absolutely receptive to that mm -hmm. um, right. because it's, it's, you know, it's, it's part of that mindset that we wanna, wanna get people onto mm -hmm. with, um, with leaving no trace when you're out in the habitat and just leave it as you found it. Well, the, um, as you mentioned, you're, you do feel immersed in nature. The windows here mm -hmm. uh, encircling the building just let in so much light, you do feel like you are and outside. That was intentional. Yeah. That was intentional. We didn't want to block off the views in any direction. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we had to have some structure, but that was absolutely intentional because yeah. we wanted you to feel like you, you were in this habitat. We want them to have that, that special, that exclusivity, that while wow, I'm really out in this habitat yeah. and studying what I'm studying, um, you know, heritage is one of those all encompassing terms that can be anything for any of us. You right. know, you're, you have your own heritage, I have my own heritage, um, but we do have one collective heritage mm -hmm. in, in our country and, mm -hmm. and with our habitat that, mm -hmm. that we feel like we just both, we have to have to worry about, about both of those things. And this yeah. is just one more outlet that can kind of visually send that message home mm -hmm. to people. Well, thank you so much, Drew. That You're is welcome. a beautiful note to end on. And if you would like to learn more about the Gettysburg Nature Alliance, Drew is interviewed mm -hmm. uh, along with some of her colleagues mm -hmm. in an article that is in our current issue of Celebrate Gettysburg Magazine. That is the July slash August 2023 issue. It's on our website, CelebrateGettysburg.com. You can learn more about what they're doing in the community, uh, what they're doing out at Gettysburg Heritage Center, and you can find out more information with links uh, to find out more about what's happening at the barn. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>